What's a wind vane? Well, I'm sure you know. It's a special arrow that always points in the direction from which the wind is coming. Doesn't matter where the wind is coming from, it'll point towards that. How can you make one? Well, that's very easy. You need a few odds and ends. Here's what you'll need. The side of a plastic ice cream container. There we are. I'll use a red one. A plastic drinking straw. You'll need a large pin or a small nail. A couple of plastic beads, you can buy those from craft shops. A small piece of modelling clay or plasticine and a stapler and a pair of scissors. Those are your tools to make this device. Here's what you do. First of all, cut a small rectangle from the end of the ice cream container side. There we are. And you'll turn the small rectangle into an arrow. That's very easy to do. Just change the rectangle into a sharp pointed triangle. That's the bit that'll point towards the wind. The other part, the rectangle that's large, will be the back part of the wind vane. You can leave it as a rectangle if you like, or looks a bit more interesting if you cut those ends off like that. There we are. Now you can see that that looks like the front and back of an arrow and you know that the straw will form the body of the arrow. Now to attach them all together, there are various ways you could do it. You could use special glue if you wanted to. Maybe you could tie them together with string or rubber bands, but I find the easiest way to do it is to use a stapler. Staple through the straw and through the back part of the vein. There we are. It's probably a little bit safer to use two staples each end. Same thing for the arrow head and you have the main part of the wind vane already manufactured. Trouble is, have a look at this. If you try and balance it from the middle, you find that it's very much back heavy. So what you need to do then is to take some of that plasticine or modeling clay and press it down onto the back of the arrow and adjust the amount of plasticine, adding more or less, until it balances pretty near the center. That one's close to the center. I have another one here where I spent several minutes adding and taking away plasticine until it balances exactly in the centre of the straw. There we are, and you'll notice I've used a couple of staples each end. Now, the large pin or nail goes down through the centre of the straw. There we are. Then you wiggle it around a little bit so that it's a nice loose fit. Then the whole thing will swing around freely. Then you place the two plastic beads on the pin in that position there, so that when the whole thing is placed on the top of the roof or a fence post that's high up in the air, it'll swing backwards and forwards very freely. Look at that. All we need to do now is to see if we can find a suitable fence post. And I have an idea that there's one back here. Now you notice at this point that you need to choose your fence post carefully. This one here on the fence was a little too large, so I added a thin piece of wood to the top so that the whole thing will swing freely around it. All I need to do now is to tap that nail through the wind vane into the fence post, check to see that it'll swivel freely, and it certainly does that, and then wait until some wind springs up. I think I can hear the wind coming now. Let's see what happens to the wind vane. Look at that, it's moving, and it swings around very quickly and points towards the wind. Why does it do that? Well, have a look at this. If it's side on to the wind, Wind will be hitting the small front part of the arrow and the large back part. There'll be more force on the back part because it's a larger area. So it pushes it in that direction until the front part points towards the wind. Now if it doesn't point exactly at the wind, if it comes past the wind, what happens now? Now you're getting more force on the back part of the arrow once again and it'll swing back that way until it's pointing straight at the wind. But what happens when the wind changes? Let's have a look. The wind, of course, is made by this electric fan. The arrow is pointing towards the wind. Now there's a change in the weather and the wind swings around. What does the wind vane do? Look at that, it's following the wind around because as the wind swings further and further around, what happens is it catches the back of the arrow and it makes the back of the arrow swivel around until the front comes back and points straight at the wind. And that's the reason why all wind vanes work the way they do. Now what I'd like you to do this week is not only to make a wind vane of your own for the backyard, but also see how many other wind vanes you can find on top of buildings.